We take you inside the Saluki locker room as they gear up for the NFL Draft. Plus, women's tennis is the hottest team on campus. We tell you how they got here. Also, we have an exclusive interview with the new Saluki women's basketball coach, Cindy Stein. This is all in the next Saluki Sports View. Thursday at 5. You're watching WSIU Carbondale, WUSI Omni. River Region Evening Edition is made possible through the membership support of viewers like you with additional support from Country Insurance and Financial Services and WSIL TV3. Broadcasting live from the campus of Southern Illinois University at Carbondale, Saluki Sports View starts right now. What's up, Southern Illinois? Saluki Sports View is back with a whole new slate of Saluki Sports action. The NFL Draft opens up tonight in New York City, and a couple of Salukis are hoping to get their names called. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. I'm Logan Lee. And I'm Courtney Sewak. Later on, we'll go one-on-one -on -one with the newest member of the SIU coaching family, women's basketball coach Cindy Stein. Then we'll head out to the campus rec center for another spotlight. But we start tonight with Saluki softball and baseball. Right now, Saluki softball is underway in a non-conference matchup in Cape Girardeau with the Southeast Missouri. That one just got underway. We'll try and update you on that one later on in the program. The softball Salukis have struggled lately on the diamond. Last week, they traveled to Evansville and suffered a sweep at the hands of the Purple Aces. They followed that up over the weekend, traveling to Creighton and only getting one of three wins against the Jays. This past Tuesday, the Dogs returned home for a single game to close out their series with Evansville and squeeze past the Aces this time 4-3. Southern currently sits in sixth place in the conference at 9-10 and 10 and have only six conference games remaining until the Valley Tournament. Saluki Baseball is looking to finish conference play strong. It'll be a tough task, though, going up against Wichita State this weekend. The Shockers are tied atop the Valley standings, and the Salukis are only 2-10 and 10 in the conference. That isn't affecting this team. Despite the poor record on the field, head coach Ken Henderson says their morale is still going strong. Morale is good. Uh, our effort is good. Again, I can't emphasize enough how good our kids are. Uh, yesterday was one of our best practices of the year. I mean, high energy. And uh, so there's never been an issue of, of uh, you, know, you know, you get frustrated when you don't win some close games and, uh, and when you feel like you let some slip away. But at no time this year has it been a lack of effort. The Salukis and Shockers will play a three-game series this weekend at A. Martin Field in Carbondale. First pitch tomorrow will be at 3 o'clock. They'll play at 2 o'clock on Saturday, with the series finale being Sunday at 1. The women's tennis Salukis finished up one of their most successful regular seasons in program history earlier this week. Though they went into Sunday's match with, with Wichita State, a perfect 6-0 in conference play, they didn't have quite enough to get past the Shockers. But that doesn't mean their season is over yet. Carrie Brin pre previews their upcoming MVC championships. The SIU women's tennis team ended their phenomenal season last weekend and looked to build on their regular season success going into the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. Coach Audra Northware is very optimistic you, about our team this weekend. Yeah, I think I like our chances well, of getting yeah. back in the finals, and then we're just going to have to go for it. You know, no pressure. They've got the, you know, they've got the regular season title. We're just going to have to go out and take it from them. Captains Melanie Delsart, Anita Lee, and sophomore Natasha Tomashima will need to have big tournaments if their Salukis want to make the conference finals. You, know, you look toward your captains, I think definitely, and uh, Melanie and Anita have always come up with some big wins in our pre pre oh, pressure, pressure situations. Um, <laughs> as well as Natasha, she um, plays very good against high quality players. She actually plays better against high quality players than she does against the lower quality players. The Salukis dramatically improved their record from last year and Coach Northware credits having more confidence to this year's team's success. The biggest improvement would just be their, their confidence level. Um, you know, I think that you have a year last year where we were successful 
they didn't really know that we were going to be successful. And now we had that confidence being like, okay, we, now we've had it for a couple years. Now we're actually going to go do it. Conference play starts tomorrow going throughout the weekend. The Salukis will face Creighton to open up their conference play and hope to bring all the confidence they can. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Carrie Brin. The Missouri Valley Conference Championships are this weekend in Wichita. The Lady Salukis open up tomorrow with Creighton at 12.30. The Men's Championships are also in Wichita this weekend, and they too get Creighton. They'll play at the Jays at 4 o'clock. The award-winning Saluki Sports View is just getting started. Coming up, after Rutgers University made national headlines for a coaching abuse scandal, we look into how Saluki coaches discipline their players. But after the break, we take a look into this weekend's NFL draft and how Saluki football players are preparing to take the next step. Saluki Sports View, we'll be right back. On the next WSIU in Focus, white squirrels are a symbol of all the Illinois, and City Clerk Belinda Hinton does not want to change that. Join us as we attend the annual Squirrel Count and learn about efforts to preserve these novel creatures. Then Jack Tishner talks with John Bull Dial, who survived the brutal civil war that engulfed Sudan. He has found a new life in the United States and is raising funds for medical and educational services in his former homeland. Don't miss WSIU in Focus. Friday at 5. WSIU and the Carbondale Public Library present the community cinema film, The Island President, a tale of global warming and rising waters for the island country of Maldives. The film is set for Saturday, April 27th at 2.30 p.m. in the community room at 405 West Main. Jerry Bush, Daily Egyptian Newspaper Business and Advertising Director, and Jack Pyatt, graduate student in Mass Communication and Media Arts, will facilitate the discussion. For information, call 618-453-6148. Two teams from the Channel 16 coverage area will clash as Fairfield takes on Cumberland on the next Scholastic IQ. They're not American, they originally came from Kazakhstan. What is this fruit used in dumplings, turnover, strudel, fritters, sauce, and all-American pies? Fairfield, Kyle. Apples. That's correct. Don't miss this exciting quarterfinal match here on Scholastic IQ. Sunday at 5.30. The NFL draft is just hours away, but the soon-to-be professional football players have been working for years to get to this point. Saluki draft hopefuls Ken Boatwright and Jason DeMont have taken different paths to get where they are. But both are thankful for the experience they have gained playing at SIU. Saluki Sports View Anthony Giassi has more on the defensive standouts and what they have done to prepare for their chances at being selected. Only 224 players are selected in the NFL draft. And for Saluki football players, the odds are weighed heavily against them. And linebacker Jason DeMonch knows this. Not really uh, expecting or hoping to get drafted. You know, if it happens, it'll be a blessing. But, you know, really just, uh, just getting an opportunity, really, uh, knowing you're going to get an opportunity is really the best part of all this. For most players, this is where their careers will end. But for a select few, this is only the beginning. The first day I ever came to this field, I wasn't on the team yet, but I see NFL scouts just walking around to practice, and I'm like, you know, coming from NAI, it's just like, you, know, you never really see that. So just now to know that they're calling my phone, having coaches and stuff calling for it's just like, it's crazy. Boatwright has had an uphill battle since graduating high school. He came from a family of 12 and walked on to the SIU football team. From there, he worked his way to becoming an All-American defensive lineman. As soon as they told me that, you know, you're going to play D-line, I just knew I had to gain some weight. Just, just from the pounding, I was going to take on my body in the three technique. It's just going to be double teams all day. SIU football coach Dale Lennon was impressed with Boatwright's natural instincts. Even though we had never played the defensive line position, uh, he was making instinctive plays that uh, you know a lot of players take a whole career to develop. So um, you know that was where Kenny really made his mark. Was he just uh, the game came to him naturally? DeMonch has enjoyed working with Boatwright to develop as players leading into the draft. It's been great, man. It's, it's like working with one of my really good friends out there. We just work hard, push each other, and uh, you know, try to make each other as good as we possibly can be. DeMonch is not one to shy away from hard work, and being a first-generation American has given him that extra motivation on and off the field. I'm going to work hard. Uh, I'm not going to complain about anything. Uh, you know, I really have, you know, just that type of mentality of, you know, I'm here just to work and uh, do what I can to, 
to make a living, if not just for myself, but for my family. The NFL draft will start tonight with the Kansas City Chiefs having the first overall pick. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Anthony Giassi. The last Saluki football player to be selected in the NFL draft was Deji Kareem when he was taken 180th overall by the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2010. While those former Salukis want to further their football careers, the current players are anxious for the season ahead. The upcoming campaign contains a season opening trip to Champaign to battle with the Fighting Illini, but perhaps the most memorable trip of the entire season will come a few weeks later. Saluki football gets a rare opportunity come September 21st. For the first time ever, a football game of any level will be played at Bush Stadium in St. Louis, and it'll feature SIU in Southeast Missouri. I, I think it's a very unique opportunity, not just for SIU and Southeast Missouri State, but I think it's a, it's a nice thing for FCS in total because there's very few of these special event neutral site games that are ever played at our level of football. Bush Stadium has already seen its share of history. In just eight years, it's already played host to two Cardinals World Series titles, as well as the 2009 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. They've seen two World Series teams come through here. You know, they're going to see a lot more, too, hopefully. So, you know, just to be able to play in this venue where a lot of, uh, of history has already been made and to make our own history is you know, pretty neat. The biggest draw for the location of the game is the alumni. Between the two schools, there are approximately 40,000 graduates in the St. Louis area. And the one thing I don't think we've ever been able to do consistently is draw those folks to Saluki Athletic Events. But this will actually allow us to have an event in their backyard and with enough pre-planning you know, and partnering up with the Alumni Association, really work to get those 12 to 15,000 alums to an event. The game will take place almost entirely on the outfield grass. The exception will be the area of the field played on the infield dirt. Because of the dimensions, both teams will share the same sideline on the east side of the stadium. Being on the same sideline, uh, you know, the press box situation is going to be a little bit different, so just your game administration uh, is going to take uh, a lot more preparation. The Salukis and Red Hawks will kick off at 1 o'clock on September 20, 21st from Bush Stadium in downtown St. Louis. Tickets will go on sale June 3rd. They'll start at $5 for students and $10 for adults. There's still plenty more sports view on the way. Later on, we'll go rock climbing with the SIU Base Kid. But up next, we'll go one-on-one -on -one with the newest member of the Saluki family, women's basketball coach Cindy Stein. We have an artist who has a passion for clay and an expert in horsehair design. And another artist who creates unique glass jewelry and specializes in cremation glass art. This season of expressions is sponsored by Pheasant Hollow Winery and by Calico Country Sew and Vac. Thursday at 9. If you're a lawmaker, you should be prohibited from receiving money from private interests that have government business. You, should, it, you can't have it both ways. Either be a lawmaker and protect me, the taxpayer, or be a business person and make money in the private sector. The Better Government Association's Andy Shaw is our guest on the next WSIU in Focus. Thursday at 9.30. Antiques Roadshow is uncovering the treasures of the Mount Rushmore State, South Dakota. Not every soldier's army pass is really worth a great deal of money, but Elvis Presley was not your average soldier. It's one of the more interesting pieces of presentation silver I've ever seen. My word. Wow. I love those numbers. I'm sure you do. There's a lot to see from Rapid City next time on Antiques Roadshow. Thursday at 7. Welcome back to Saluki Sports View. I'm joined here in studio with the new coach of the women's basketball Salukis, Cindy Stein. Cindy, thank you for joining us today. Uh, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Uh, first off, you know, 
tell us a little bit, have you settled into Carbondale, or is it still, you know, a lot of traveling with recruiting and all the, you know, basketball operations? Well, it's a little bit of both. I've had the opportunity to uh, get a lot of recruiting done. We had a weekend where we could go to Chicago and, and North Carolina to recruit, and then it's back here just trying to prepare your team, trying to find a place to live, trying to get assistance in, get them to find a place to live. Just a little bit of a battle of everything. I understand. Tell us, uh, before we get to any more details, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, who are you and, you know, what is your background in coaching? Well, it's funny because uh, everyone says, uh, if you talk to my friends, uh, you know, I, I'm a basketball coach. That's what I do. That's what I spend the majority of my time doing. I really take a lot of pleasure in making kids better, uh, trying to help them reach their dreams academically, athletically. Um, but there is also a side. I like to play a lot of golf. Um, I like to watch the St. Louis Cardinals. I like to watch the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, beyond that, there really is time for zero else. Uh, okay, so it's no secret that the success of the women's basketball program here has struggled, especially of late. It's been seven years since they've even had a 20-win season. You know, what's the first step in your process here to change that and turn things around? Well, a lot of it's consistency. We've got to have a lot more consistency, and that's a, a lot of it starts with the players, and that's what we're working with now. There's a mentality that you have to have as a player uh, to do the little things right and to be disciplined and to have a lot of energy to play at a high level, high intensity for a long amount of time. And uh, getting that kind of consistency and that play out of your kids is important to win any kind of Missouri Valley Conference championship. And you touched on consistency as a whole, uh, but one of the other issues here lately has been continuity. Uh, players leaving the program, both men's and women's team, have seen a lot of this. You know, what's, what are you going to have to do to make sure that we keep players here in our program? Well, I think that's definitely a trend nationally. I think you see that throughout the country. But I think that the, what we can do here is obviously make sure that we have really good communication with our players in every aspect, whether it's academically, uh, athletically, and talking about the expectations so that they come in knowing what the expectations are. But, you know, kids want to play. So anytime you have a group of kids that, that aren't playing the minutes they think they should, you're going to always have that issue. So it's trying to make... The, their life uh, and their life experience, something that they want to stay a part of the Saluki family. So you, you try to gather all that information and get those kind of kids that will fit in right with your system and the things that you want to do academically. Right. And, uh, you know, what are your short-term and long-term goals uh, as you enter in here with your, uh, under your first season? Well, short-term goal, win. Long-term, win. Uh, it's plain and simple. And you can say, well, we've got all this to do. And we've got to bring in the right players. And we have 14 players coming in next year. You know, it's hard to play 14. You can bring in all these excuses. We do not want to do that. One of the things with consistency is making sure that we are accountable and that we don't make excuses. And that's how we'll start uh, this program out and do the best that we can and, and be accountable for whatever is the result of our actions on the court. Coach, uh Southern Illinois basketball fans are familiar with the name Cindy Scott, uh, who spent a long time here uh, as the coach of the women's basketball Salukis. What did you take from her, you know, growing up and learning the ropes of, of women's basketball coaching? What did you learn from her? Because I know you talked in your news conference when you first came here. Uh, you had a lot of stories about her. But, you know, what did you take from her and what uh, did you learn? Well, she's obviously one of the best coaches around. And just the fact that the way she disciplined her teams – from a defensive standpoint, an offensive standpoint, they, you know, they didn't, uh, they took care of the ball. They played hard nose defense. Um, they rebounded well. They got out and they were disciplined on their attack. And uh, she brought in some great players. And, and those, so all of those things you learn from her and how she got that done. And part of our process has been hiring her, her top assistant, Julie Beck, into our Dobo position. And I think that will help us kind of have what they've done to help create uh, everything around her program to make a better result on the basketball floor. Uh, in your news conference when you were introduced here, you told a story uh, about your first experience down here when you were coming here as a player and looking to play down here at Southern Illinois. Uh, in a shortened version of that, could you kind of tell the audience a little bit about that story? Well, obviously I wanted it to be a Saluki, so I came down here for a, a visit and I had to have a tryout and uh, I guess I didn't do the right things but because uh, I didn't get a scholarship offer. And uh, I keep saying I think that they offered it to some slow fat kid but because um, I didn't get it, but maybe I was the slow fat kid. Um, but I tell you, it was a tornado warning. I had to hide in some tunnel somewhere. I remember all of those things. Uh, but it also made me better. It made me a better player uh, in the result of that happening and made me work harder. All right, Coach, I want to thank you for joining us uh, coming in today uh, and 
Good luck this season. You know, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how the how things turn out for you in the program. Well, no problem. Thank you for having me here, and I expect you at the games. <laughs> no doubt about it. Courtney and I will be back with more Saluki Sports View after the break. On today's Community Dateline, the 19th Annual Southern Illinois Economic Development Conference Paving the Way for Progress event begins at 8 a.m. on Friday, May 3rd in the Workforce Development Building at John A. Logan College in Carterville. Dr. Drabin Stott and Dr. Mildred Warner present strategies to help compete better in the global economic race. For more information or to register, please call 1-800-851-4720. Free preschool screenings will be held this Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the pre-K classroom at Giant City School in Carbondale. Screenings include game-like activities that measure your child's motor and social development. All screenings are free and confidential. For more information or to schedule an appointment, please call 1-888-340-6702. An American Red Cross Blood Drive takes place on Saturday from 7.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. at the Blood Donation Center in Fairview Heights. Spring into action and give hope by giving blood. For more information, please call 314-658-2036. A mother-daughter tea benefit is on Sunday from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Community Center in Carterville. Ladies of all ages are invited to celebrate Mother's Day just a little early. Proceeds go to Carbondale Women's Center. For tickets or more information, call 618-529-2807. If you have an item of community interest, please send your mail or email two weeks in advance to the address on your screen. Rutgers University parted ways with basketball coach Mike Rice earlier this month after a video was found of him abusing his players during practice. Sportsview's Matt Ferguson spoke with SIU basketball coach Barry Hinson and athletic director Mario Moja to let them weigh in on Rice's actions against his players. People around the nation saw former Rutgers coach Mike Rice's treatment of his players. The things that I witnessed on the video, you know, those are very inexcusable. SIU men's basketball coach Barry Hinson is known for his fiery demeanor on the sidelines. He weighed in on the balance between being verbal and being violent. When you run up behind a guy and you kick him or when you run up on a guy and he cows down, I, 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 just, I, I just don't think that's a, a format in order for you to teach young people. And I've told our staff and I've told our players, we'll never put our hands on you, we'll never grab you, we'll never hit you, we'll never kick you, and we will not verbally abuse you in any way, shape, or form that you find it derogatory. We will not use derogatory comments. We will not use derogatory words. Rutgers Athletic Director Tim Parenti suspended and fined Rice after learning of his actions, but later resigned after being accused of letting Rice off easy. SIU's AD Mario Mocha is a friend of Parenti. It's really incumbent that I think you step away from maybe the immediacy of what's going to happen. Coach. Rutgers has the replacement for Rice with the hiring of Eddie Jordan earlier this week. Jordan has nine years of NBA head coaching experience with the Kings, Wizards, and 76ers. Saluki Sports View isn't quite done yet. First, here's a look at the upcoming weekend in Saluki Sports. We'll be right back. This man climbed into a 10-ton truck and drove it straight into our hatchback. Driving a truck into the path of a young teenage girl is not an accident. And try attempted murder. Wrong corpse. Right corpse, wrong name. What's going on? The man's insane. Oh, shut up. It's like they're all in it together. You know when you're a long way from home and you do stupid stuff? Misleading a police investigation, that's not good. Inspector Lewis on Masterpiece Mystery. Saturday at 9. On the next episode of Australia's First Four Billion Years, an adventure way down under Blimey, this is tough. reveals the key to the kangaroo's story and the giant evolutionary leap that led to a continent of strange creatures. Huge wombats, huge kangaroos, and giant koalas. Now this little guy, he's a truly famous Australian. Australia's First Four Billion Years on Nova. Wednesday at 8. I asked PBS if I could host a new show about the Constitution. You know what they said? Hit the road. I am Peter Sagal. Does the Constitution have what it takes to keep up with the lives? This is my country. 
limits. We should have the same right to marry each other. And freedoms of modern America. Well, let's find out. Constitution USA, with me, Peter Sagal. Premieres Tuesday, May 7th, 9, 8 Central, only on PBS. It's taken a while, but the temperatures have finally caught up to the calendar. Alex Wilson takes a look at what the rec center is doing to help you explore the great outdoors. The great outdoors. A lot of people take it for granted, but graduate assistant Mitch Belsley says the SIU's base camp can help you get back in touch with nature. So we run trips that we advertise here that are already kind of pre-established trips. So we like to focus on high perceived risk uh, adventures. So we do rock climbing, whitewater rafting, caving. We do backcountry wilderness trips where we will go back, uh, backpacking into wilderness areas down here in southern Illinois. Base camp is located right across from the weight room on the first floor of SIU's rec center. Out at the front desk, they have all kinds of tents, kayaks, and other equipment that they rent out to the general public, not just SIU students. First and foremost, we uh, are a resource as far as our rental cage. So we rent various different things from uh, canoes, uh, kayaks, tents, uh, basically anything that you need in order to travel into the backcountry safely and recreate over a multitude of different recreational opportunities. There are a couple different trips. There's day trips and then, for instance, we would do maybe a kind of an intensive backpacking trip into Lust Creek Wilderness Area. If traveling isn't really your thing, though, they have a rock wall right down the hall. It's open four days a week during the school year and two or three times a week over the summer. And the wall is adaptable to all people of all different skill levels. After getting all strapped up and some brief instructions, they even gave me a chance on the rock wall. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Alex Wilson. It's open Fridays from 3 to 6 p.m., Saturdays from 9 to, 8, or 9 to noon, and Sundays from 4 to 7. For more information, you can visit the Rec Center's website at reccenter.siu.edu. The, the Saluki track team is headed to Drake this weekend to partake in one of the biggest track competitions in the country. The 104th running of the Drake Relays will see 8,000 athletes, including a few from the 2012 Summer Olympics, descending on the Missouri Valley campus. The Salukis have seven top 50 ranked athletes, including top hammer throwers J.C. Lambert and Kim Fortney. The Relays will be featured on the ESPN Family of Networks on tape delay Saturday night from 7 to 8.30 p.m. and will be shown live Friday night at 6.30 p.m p.m. on ESPN3. The Salukis hope for a strong showing in the event as they build up to the Missouri Valley Championship next week. As we mentioned earlier, we do have an update for you from the softball game in Cape Girardeau. The Salukis have started the game on the wrong foot. Southern had a hit but couldn't manage any runs in the first inning. Three Red Hawk players crossed the plate in the bottom of the inning. Simo pushed across another run in the second. The Red Hawks lead SIU 4-0. Thank you for joining us tonight. You can check out both Saluki Sports View and Evening Edition on the web, eveningedition.siu.edu. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Saluki Sports View is off the air for a while. You can join us again in September. The Evening Edition returns Monday for one last week of shows. Catch us Monday through Thursdays at 5 on your WSIU television station. So for Courtney Sewak, I'm Logan Lee. Have a great night. River Region Evening Edition is made possible through the membership support of viewers like you with additional support from Country Insurance and Financial Services and WSIL-TV3.